everyone who has been engaged either in translating, publishing, uh, or distributing Srila Prabhupada's books has really had an experience of the transcendental energy just going into his or her life and uh, uplifting. Yes, you can call them to listen if you want to listen. This is uh, something which is really one of the magical byproducts of uh, book distribution and book publishing. Uh, you touch transcendence and, and you feel it. It's like stepping on a live wire and feeling the different uh, energy going through you. And I'm going to speak briefly about how to feel that transcendental empowerment. So I'm very, very grateful. I feel I've joined my, my secret brotherhood of book distributors and uh, book uh, publishers and I'm very... Uh, Mm. inspired to address you on the principles of book distribution and then mm, on transcendental empowerment and I will be really brief. Uh, first of all, I wouldn't be here if there would not have been a merciful devotee who distributed uh, literature to me. Mm. Shishika Prabhu has informed us that movement spread by the spreading of literature and uh, yes uh, I have seen that also when I got my uh, first uh, piece of literature it was actually a back to God it uh, magazine mm. I, I surrendered my last amount of Lakshmi which was in the pocket which I needed actually for a train to bring me back where I was living. Mm. Um, when I got this literature, I remember trying to read Prabhupada's article. It was the peace formula. And I could not understand a word. Uh, then I took the book, not the book, the, the magazine, home and tried a second time. Mm. And uh, I do remember reading a sentence which struck me and I still remember the sentence I mean I've written it down but I remember the moment when I read it what it did to me here's the sentence if you want peace at all you will have to change your consciousness into Krishna consciousness both individually and collectively hmm. So Prabhupada was talking about removing a false concept of peace and success and exchanging it with Krishna consciousness. And uh, the way he's, he, he just wrote um, these sentences with so much conviction, really, uh, I can only say it exploded my, my present, my, my understanding. I was first a little rebellious. How is this so? But then upon... Uh, Reading it, I could understand, yes, uh, when you want to change the world, you have to change yourself. The Bhagavatam speaks about the, the man in the mirror, <laughs> a person standing before the mirror. If you want your mirror image to change, you, you need to to put a tilak on your forehead, you need to do something with the person who stands before the mirror. So the world is only a mirror to the, for the consciousness of the many people who are in it. And if they, if we wanted ever to be different, we have to go to the individual person, that one person, that single person, that. Uh, that uh, yes, and give him something which changes his consciousness. And then the man in the mirror or the projections out in the world will also change. I, I still remember this very, very uh, fondly because after reading it, even struggling with the concept at the very initial state, 
I had a profound change and I understood. Uh, it's not enough to, to just protest for peace. Uh, it's not enough to just be rebellious towards the society and trying to change it. I have to change myself first. And Prabhupada was the one who told it to me and I understood it. And I decided to uh, purchase uh, a Bhagavad Gita. At that time, it was not yet in the BBT, it was a Macmillan Bhagavad Gita and uh, read it and, and it, it, it changed me. I do remember our Brahma Muhuta Prabhu. Uh, he took a whole, I think, uh, suitcase of Prabhupada's books uh, with him. He traveled to India. He sat at a holy place and he read the books one by one. And when he was finished, <laughs> a, a bus came by and uh, out came devotees of Krishna and they swooped him up, they took him in the bus, and he became the BBT manager eventually. <laughs> so the books do something. They do something to the man in the mirror, <laughs> the man who stands before the world and looks at the world at a reflection. They, they change him. So therefore, this is the most noble uh, spiritual uh, activity for spreading Krishna consciousness. Um, what is the contents of this book? There is a repeated message. I have found one uh, quote from Srila Prabhupada, which, which, makes the, which brings the message of the uh, books to, on the point. It says, the Lord does not want any one of his innumerable sons, living entities, to remain in the material world of the threefold miseries, to perpetually suffer the material pangs of birth, death, old age, and disease. The Lord doesn't want anyone to stay and uh, suffer in this world. And a great plot has been arranged by him. Brahma uh, was sent into the world to create, but he had a secret second mission, which was very much on his heart. His second mission was to enlighten the conditioned souls so that they con could uh, qualify uh, and re rejoin the eternal spiritual world. Mm. Prabhupada writes in one Bhagavatam but you, you will like this very much. Anyone, mm, mm, uh, here it is, anyone who's preaching the mission of the Lord and the line of the Brahma Sampradaya, that's the lineage following Lord Brahma, which has his ideas in it. Anyone who is preaching is always dear to the Lord, and the Lord becomes satisfied with such a preacher of the authorized bhakti cult, and he shakes hands <laughs> with him in great satisfaction. Everyone out there who listens to this, this is the way to become introduced to Krishna. Um, this join the Brahma. Brahma's mission to enlighten the conditioned souls so that they can go back home. And, uh, and uh, the Lord will come and shake your hands. Uh, now we are moving towards the Bhadra campaign. And uh, I remember my, now my main service is, uh, I'm still a preacher, but I'm preaching on various, uh, various ways. League of Yogis, uh, various outreach programs, um, kirtan events, festivals for the devotees, etc. But when the month of Bhadra came last year, I, I read that anyone who gives away a Bhagavatam set on a golden throne, uh, 
what was the re result? He goes back to Godhead, isn't it? By Shishika, he goes back to Godhead. Yes. And and I I thought I need a little back to Godhead in my program. Uh, so, I, but I thought a golden throne, how do I get a golden throne? And then I Googled on Amazon <laughs> in case anyone is interested to get a, a, a easy, here it is, I think you can see a little. It has, mm, this is a throne book chair and I, I, per, I got a, a few Bhagavatam sets actually. And uh, put them on the on the throne, <laughs> and then gave it away to to the people. I put them in a in a in a what is a paper basket or no? What is it called? Cartoon, cartoon. And uh, yes, because um, I need a little back to Godhead doses. <laughs> uh, now I know from many years of distributing. Srila Prabhupada's books on the street. Mm. And later, uh, opening Namhata programs all over the German speaking areas of Europe. Mm. Uh, I knew, I know that sometimes distributing sets of books to people who are not yet willing to take uh, the books can be an austerity. It can be difficult. Those of you uh, who were on book distribution on the streets know it. Those who go door to door, I heard in Silicon Valley every Saturday, the devotees in the temple empties out and goes to door to door. And sometimes uh, you get um, yeah less enthusiastic responses, <laughs> let us say like this. You need inner strength to do this. It's not armchair philosophy. It's getting out there and, uh, and um, facing, I could say, uh, this timeless resistance against Krishna's uh, control. And uh, spiritual strength is necessary. My dear devotees, first of all, I would like to give you a beautiful quotation which says that there are two types of strengths. This uh, one normal strengths and with the, you know physical and intelligence and then spiritual strengths. And then I would like to mm, give you some idea how you might develop your spiritual strengths or refresh your spiritual strengths or the Heighten your spiritual strengths. First of all, there are two types of strengths. Prabhupada writes this in 9, 10, 20. Ninth Kanto, 10th chapter, verse 20. There are two types of strengths. Daiva and Purushakara. Daiva refers, refers to the strengths achieved from the transcendence. Spiritual word. And Purushakara refers to the strengths organized by one's own intelligence and power. Transcendental power, Prabhupada says, is always superior. Beautiful quotation, isn't it? Uh, it appears uh, in the part of the Bhagavatam where we find uh, the army of monkeys confronting the well-armed uh, army of the Asuras, the demons who were fighting for uh, um, um, Ravan. And uh, we find the surprising result that the monkeys were superior because they were um, empowered by Lord Ram Machandra, um, Daiva uh, strength, no? his spiritual strength, which was victorious over all the material strengths, even the armed strengths of the Rakshasas. How can you, on this call, <laughs> and your friends, and to, um, obtain spir this spiritual strength, which will make you uh, uh, give you strength to distribute these books? Uh, Srila Prabhupada 
wrote about this in a letter to Bhakti Tirta Maharaj. And Bhakti Tirta Maharaj had often spoken with me about this particular letter because he was amongst those devotees who went behind the iron curtain, you know, that was in a uh, that was at a, at a time when the East Bloc, we called it, formed a, a strong alliances of countries. Mm, uh, uh, and there was always the danger of an outbreak between the countries which were from the West and the country uh, in the East Bloc. So, so what, what separated the East and the West was called an iron curtain. Mm. So Bhakti Tirta Maharaj was one of the devotees who went with the BBT library party behind the iron curtain into the east, mm, where at that time, uh, atheistic materialism mm, ruled as the state's philosophy. Yes, Karl Marx and, and the communistic doctrines were very strong and they were not appreciating anything spiritual at that time. So he went there and news came back that whenever he returned, he had distributed, oh, I'm so bad in numbers, but phenomenal amounts of Bhagavatam sets, phenomenal, mm, 250 on one journey. I was really, <laughs> we were all, our brains were smoking, it was so much. And uh, Srila Prabhupada had carefully observed uh, the BBT library party and their adventures in distributing sets of Bhagavatam in, be, behind the Iron Curtain. Uh, and he wrote uh, a letter which I thought was very uh, nice. It, in this letter you find out some hints how to obtain your own spiritual empowerment. Prabhupada wrote, now you must agree to very rigidly follow the rules and regulations. In other words, chanting 60 rounds of beads daily, rising early, attending Mangal Aarti, observing the four principles, attending the classes, eating only Bhagavad Prasadam, as well as working under the instruction of my representatives, such as your GBC representative and the Tampa president. And if you follow this procedure very strictly, then your life will be glorious. My dear devotees, mm, as the Badra campaign uh, gains momentum as our spirits are arising, and as we listen to these numbers from the BBT, from Canada, from France, and uh, uh, all around the world, please let us remember the second half of the Batra campaign. Mm. Only when the two come together, uh, it will be really moving forward. Um, and I know that you know it, but uh, I get my prasadam for saying this. You know, this is the duty of uh, preachers. Um, please, everyone, think how you can raise your level of consciousness so that you can have an empowered uh, life where the Daivi strength, the Daivi Prakriti moves through you and gives you wings, wings by which you can overcome the ordinary obstacles which you may know. It is simple. Increase your sadhana, have association with devotees who are inspiring uh, you in your a progressive path of Krishna consciousness. Very important, if you want to go to a higher level, associate with those who are already on this level, who 
embody the very ideals which you would like to develop. And third, read the books yourself uh, regularly. These are the three P's of empowerment. P, the letter P, huh? philosophy, people, and uh, practice. You know? Or in uh, Sanskrit, uh, the Shastras, the uh, Sadhus, Sadhu Sangha, and uh, uh, Sadhana. Huh? This is, they will help you to come in contact with this life via of transcendental empowerment. I thank you very much. I thank our Vaisheshika very much for heading up this program. I was unlimitedly happy to see Brahma Muhurta Prabhu with his very accurate tilak that has always uh, amazed me how he can make such a beautiful tilak. Uh, I can imagine the man in the mirror has also a tilak uh, because he has learned uh, to put it, uh, to change his life to, uh, and then the reflection also has. Yeah, so these are some, some thoughts. For us, uh, I'm, I'm happy to hear that the German devotees are uh, inspired and into it. That's very nice. And uh, for us, um, very soon, next weekend, the Ratha Yatra comes and we can make an announcement from the stage. We are right in the, uh, the best place in Berlin, Brandenburger Gate, and uh, have a stage and we will make a lot of spiritual vibrations. <laughs> Germany needs this now. I mean, the whole world needs this positive thing. And we will also, I will call the temple president after this phone and tell him to make arrangements that we can sell Bhagavatam.